Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn, and you're watching the Daily Lipid video blog. Today I'd like to pose a question to you, do Americans have the right to consume healthy food? Now this may seem like kind of a silly question at first, because after all, don't any of us have the right to go down to Walmart or to any large chain grocery store and buy whatever foods we want, regardless of how healthy or unhealthy they, they may be, from an absolutely abundant number of choices? But the question starts to make a lot more sense if we start thinking outside the box of the industrial food system. And it especially begins making sense if we read David Gumpert's new book, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Food Rights, The Escalating Battle Over Who Decides What We Eat. If you value food or you value freedom, but especially if you care about food and freedom, I highly recommend you read Gumpert's book. What Gumpert covers in this book is the critical issue of the increasing interest among Americans in pastured and private food and the corresponding increasingly hostile government crackdown on these types of exchanges, and most importantly, the light at the end of the tunnel where he makes compelling recommendations about what we can do to fight to preserve our rights to consume healthy, nutrient-dense foods. So why this interest in private and pastured food? Well, Americans are increasingly interested in pastured food because when animals are raised on pasture, in their natural environments, consuming their natural diets rather than in the confinement-based industrial factory farming model, those animals are healthier and happier, and as a consequence, the products derived from them are more healthful and more nutritious for us to consume. So why the interest in private food? Well, private food simply refers to a system of exchanges that are removed from the jurisdiction of the normal retail regulatory environment through private contractual agreements between members of private food clubs or between consumers and farmers. These exchanges are important because they offer several advantages. The first is they allow more direct connections between consumers and their farmers. This allows the consumer to better understand where her or his food is coming from and thus have a better assurance of its quality. It also allows those consumers to support small-scale farmers who are doing farming the way farming should be done. It allows those farmers to cut out the middleman, make a better profit, and have a better chance of making a real living, and to survive and thrive in an era where these types of farmers have been going out of business continually because they face increasingly difficult competition from large corporations using the industrial factory farming model who use the normal retail regulatory environment in order to shore up their own model and protect themselves from competitions from smaller farmers with superior products. These models of exchanges also allow consumers a greater access to a larger diversity of foods in two ways. First, they lower the barrier to entry to small-scale artisanal food producers who would otherwise not be able to enter the market in the normal retail regulatory environment. Second, they allow consumers access to foods that would otherwise be prohibited by law to those consumers. One common example is raw or unpasteurized milk, which has to be the most prominent example. Raw milk is sought out by many health-conscious consumers because of their personal experiences and some scientific literature suggesting that that type of milk may be healthier than normal conventional milk, especially when it comes from grass-fed cows raised out on pasture. Raw milk, however, is illegal in about half of states, and even where it is legal, it's often illegal to sell it in retail stores or to sell even direct to consumers value-added products made from the milk, like butter or cream, or fermented milk products like yogurt or kefir or cheese. Foods sought out by health-conscious consumers interested in natural sources of fat-soluble vitamins and probiotic bacteria. So there's all the reasons to support pastured and private food. Why the government crackdown? Well, we don't really know why the government's cracking down, but what we do know is that this crackdown is involving some of the most bizarre tactics imaginable. Things like undercover agents infiltrating farmers markets and private food clubs, armed raids against food co-ops, landing normal people like graphic designers or single mom farmers or owners of food co-ops in jail cells with violent criminals because they're being accused of felony conspiracy to sell milk the wrong way or massive email surveillance campaigns going on for months and large scales in secrecy 
We also have evidence suggesting that the FDA is coordinating these crackdowns behind the scenes in a way that makes it look like these crackdowns are actually completely unrelated and independent crackdowns by state and local authorities. We also know that this crackdown, these crackdowns aren't just on private food clubs, but the crackdowns are increasingly seen on pastured food in general. The most egregious case I know of is that of Mark Baker of Baker's Green Acres in Michigan, where the Department of Natural Resources is ordering him to destroy all of his pigs and trying to fine him $700,000 for not destroying all his pigs, simply because those pigs are a heritage breed of pigs that are better suited for pasture rather than confinement. Nevertheless, this isn't completely depressing. The situation is ex actually very hopeful because Gumper provides numerous compelling recommendations about how we can fight to better preserve our rights to consume healthy, high-quality, nutrient-dense foods, the most important of which is simply to get out there and make our voices heard and make our dollars used to support farmers who are doing things the right way. So if this topic interests you, I encourage you to use the link in the description of this video to go read my review of Gumpert's book, and if that review makes a compelling case for you to read the book, to purchase a copy for yourself, get educated, and get involved in the movement. Again, I'm Chris Masterjohn. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. You've been watching the Daily Lipid video blog. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you tune in again next time.